Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you all about resource management within Microsoft Project. Today I'm going to be using the very latest version of Microsoft Project, Microsoft Project 2022. Alright, so first thing I'm going to do is explain to you a little bit about resources in Microsoft Project. If I click on the view ribbon, I'm going to go to the resource sheet. This is the prominent, predominant place where you will come to manage your resources. There are three different types, okay, so we have people. Tom Henry, I'm a person. Okay, maybe another person here, Jason Durrell, and we're going to give them a standard rate of $60 per hour. Okay, now people is the first thing, and it's going to be your predominant resource on a project. So, the people that you have assigned to work on the tasks within your project, that's where your costs are going to come from within the project. For the most part, it's always manpower in projects, right? The second thing we might have to take into consideration is any fixed cost. Uh, maybe contractors where they just give us an invoice or maybe uh, expenses for travel where people put, give us a travel uh, receipt and we want to give them their money back. Any kind of fixed costs that we don't want to track on a kind of prorated basis, but just a fixed cost. That's going to be things like travel, maybe software, and this is the type cost resource. This is the second type I want to talk about. There's three types, work, material, cost. The first type is a work resource. That's a prorated cost resource, fixed cost. Third type, material. So let's say you're building a house. You're going to need some bricks. Let's say you're going to need some lumber, right? By default, it's work. We want to switch that to materials. There's three different types, prorated, fixed and material. Oh, what did I do there? There we go, material. Now the material labels are going to be tracked on a unit by unit basis. So for bricks, I actually need to give it a material. If I double click here, material label. This is only related to materials. And we're going to track bricks in pallets. For lumber, we're going to track that in square foot. See, I've been in America too long, right? And how much do we charge for a pallet of bricks? Maybe $100. Square foot of lumber, 20 bucks. All right, there we go. So if you've used two pallets, it's gonna cost you 200. If you use 20, so on and so forth. Your work resources are prorated, so we charge it out per hour. Your cost resource is gonna be fixed. So when we assign the travel cost or the software cost or any other fixed cost that we want to add in here, we will specify what that value is going to be at the time of assignment. So you can switch out the calendars for your work resources, right? So if they work different hours, they have different rates or overtime rates, right? So if you say if they work on the weekends, they get 120, you can do that as well. Maybe we'll give them a hundred dollars on the overtime rate. Um, cost per use. So every time you use this resource, maybe there's a call out fee. If it's an electrician, they charge you 20 bucks an hour plus a hundred dollars every time you use them on a particular task. You can do that as well. Maybe you'll say Tom Henry charges us $20 call out fee for gas because gas prices right now in 2022 are pretty high. Um, we can also set the max units for a particular resource. Um, this is the percentage that they generally work on the tasks within your project. So if you have someone that's a part-time resource, say Jason is part-time, he only works four hours a day, Monday through Friday. So 50% of his standard calendar. And you can create your own calendars, etc. All right, good. Let's move on. So we've got our resources. You know the three different types. Next thing I want to do is show you how to start assigning those resources to the tasks within your project. To do that, I'm going to go back to the Gantt chart view. That was the resource sheet view I was previously in. We're going back to the Gantt chart view. You see resource sheet, Gantt chart. So there's three different ways to assign the resources to the tasks on your project. I have other videos on this as well that gets into more details, but you know, the quickest and easiest way is to just come in to the resource names column, use the drop down, and you can see all the people here. I'm going to assign Jason and Tom to this one task. Boom, done. You can see if I expand this out that Jason is only working 50%. That's because his max units are 50%. Whereas Tom's working full time. 
for real estate, let's do something similar. We can come in here and we'll just assign Tom. Great. Now, when you do that, you can see I'm now becoming over allocated because these tasks were working side by side. So if I make Tom Henry 50% on this task and 50% on the other one, we should be good. Let's have a look at how we would do that. This brings me to another way of assigning resources, the task form. This is probably my favorite way because it gives you the most choices and the most options. So you see we've got Jason and Tom on that one and Tom on that one. 50% on this one is working 100%. And those tasks overlap. We can see that handily on the Gantt chart. And we have the infamous red man on the left hand side saying that these tasks are over allocated. So I'm going to come in here and make Tom 50% of this task. And on this task, 50% also. That should deal with the over allocation. However, it will significantly impact the duration, right? It's going to push out the duration of that task because I'm only working full half time. There was a set number of hours of work within that time. That's pushed that out. So there we go, but we're no longer over allocated. And I look at that now, uh, we've gone from 20 to 40 months, but the work will get done and that's a reasonable amount of time. Now, if you wanted to assign a second resource to help with that, maybe Jason can help to bring that time in, right? We want to get the, the duration back. What I'm going to do is click effort driven. That locks the work for this task. In fact, let's switch this table out to the resources and predecessors. So you right click in here. And this is actually the default. I can see how many work hours are on this task. 3,200 effort driven is checked. That won't change. When you check the effort driven, when you assign a second resource, the work remains consistent. Come in here and add Jason, who also works the 50%. When I press OK, boom, the work's split. We're now back on track. Ah, Jason is also working on this other task, 50%. So there's some overlap there that we need to deal with. Um, as, uh, not sure why, but they should be working 50-50 on each task. Um, maybe Jason's working on another task as well. But anyway, we'll ignore that for now. So there we go. That's a little bit about how to assign the resources using the task form. There's one other way that I really like and that's to click on an individual task or even two tasks like so using the, the shift key come to the resource ribbon assign resources and in here i can select one or more resources right no nope, i'm gonna do that i want jason and tom and click assign and those two are now assigned you can see these tasks are overlapping i've got a very limited resource pool so that's why they're over allocated now but that's fine but that assign resources dialog, the point being is that you can assign multiple resources to multiple tasks at the same time. I really like this dialog as well because it kind of like, it doesn't go away when you click in behind it, it updates. It's one of the only boxes in Windows that you don't have to click out of before clicking back into it. It's kind of like a widget almost. I haven't seen this in any other application in Office 365 to be honest with you. So yeah, I can assign resources very quickly and easily using the assigned resources, clicking around, scrolling, etc. All right, I think we're good with assigning resources. Uh, let's talk about uh, our materials and our fixed costs now, uh, cost resources, software, travel. It's a best practice within Microsoft Project when you're assigning these fixed costs to assign them at the summary tasks level. You should never assign work resources at the summary task level, only your fixed costs. So I'm going to come in, add some software budget to the event planning. All right, so I'm going to assign it. And at this time, once it's assigned, I'm going to give it a $5,000 budget for event planning. And that will be throughout this 50 month period, long time, right? Again, I can do the same thing for travel, click assign and come in and say maybe $4,000. Good. All right, so that's assigned. Last thing I want to show you is materials. So uh, let's come down to the construction. Uh, we need to uh, erect the walls. There we go. That's going to need some bricks. Let's come into the resource name drop down. Let's come into bricks and say that we're probably going to need 50, 150 pallets. 
There we go. And you can see as soon as I do that, I can now go up in increments, six pallets. So we've got six pallets. If I was to come in here and insert the cost column, I can see those costs going up. Oh, where was I? Oh, uh, 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 wreck walls. There we go. 600 bucks. As I add more pallets, seven and a half, 750. Those costs are all coming in. And the nice thing about project is once you do resource management like this, you can see the costs filtering up and up and up. So it goes to the planning phase, up to the event planning and costs at the project summary task level, line zero. If you don't have that in your project, you can get it by coming on the format and checking project summary task to pull that in. You'd name that the name of your project. By default, it would be the name of your project up here. I actually changed that for the purposes of this video. All right, what's the next thing I want to show you? So once you've assigned people, the first thing you want to do is this is a very good plan of my project. I've got all my resources assigned. I've come in and leveled them so that we don't have any over allocation. I have another video that digs into that. I'll put a link at the end of this one if you want to see that. But uh, let's go ahead and baseline our project. Set baseline, set baseline. Okay. I have another video on baseline if you want more information, but right now we've just taken all of our information in the project and set, saved it to a baseline. So we can now start tracking not only the costs, but also the baseline costs. Now the baseline is the, um, oops, the baseline is the, I'm terrible multitasker, baseline cost. There we go. Baseline is a save date at the start of your project before you get it on, into the project that we so we can know what did we plan to spend? What did we plan to work? What was the planned duration, etc. I like to see the costs here. And we'll look at that as we go into our next topic, which is tracking project progress. You have three different ways to track project progress in Microsoft Project. You have the percent complete method, actual work and remaining work method, and actual work per period. I'm going to drill into those now. So the easiest way to track the percent complete of the work in your project, I always start with the easiest, is to come to the task ribbon and click on the task and actually mark the percent complete here. There we go. I'm going to say 100% complete. That task is now done. The costs are now actual costs. The only difference is if you look at the baseline and the cost, there's no disparity between the two. We just said it's done. We don't know when it started. We didn't know if it took longer. If you want extra granularity, I'd recommend the second method, which is actual work and remaining work. Okay. To do that, we come into the view ribbon and I'm going to actually switch the table to the tracking table. This table is really nice. It shows you all the different methods here, different fields that you can use. So you can make it your own. The ones I'm going to have is actual start, actual finish, percent complete. You don't need the physical percent complete. It's if you're doing earn value, actual duration, remaining duration actual work, remaining work. I like to just actually track actual work and remaining work. The duration is slightly different to that. And the actual cost will be something that I don't really care about at this point. So my method is actual start, actual finish, actual work, and then remaining work. And you can reorder these as well. Let's move that over here. This is the way I like to set this out. And what I'm going to do, you can see this one that we've actually tracked work in here. After the fact, we can come in and say, well, it actually took a little bit longer than originally planned. That's going to affect the actual work. I'm going to show you how we're going to track the real estate. So we can say how much work was actually done. Well, you know, over time, they're going to give you updates. Oh, I've done 50 hours work this week or work 40 hours this week. I've done 40. How many is left? Well, I've still got 30, 31, <laughs> 3,160 hours left to go. Are you sure? Oh, I didn't really get much done. So maybe we're still at 4,000. Updated the remaining work that pushes out the amount, the end date of that task. It gives us a more accurate forecast. Actual work remaining. When your task completes, let's say we get the remaining work, you know, I've done uh, now I've done uh, 5,000 hours. Boom, the remaining work goes up to zero. Maybe I've still got 10 left to go though. Almost 99% complete. Now, when you've done that 10 hours, let's say we've done 5,020. 5,200, let's say. At that point, when there's no more work remaining. All right, so the next thing I want to do is show you another method, actual work per period. 
this is probably going to be a little bit too far for you when you are uh, doing this manually. But think of it like this. If you're using Project Online, you could have the end users fill out timesheets and those actual hours will come in. OK, but if you really are, you know, if you've got a very high level project, it's only five to ten tasks and you want to actually track how many hours we've done each day. That's important that you can do that. Let me show you how we can do that. So I'm going to come to the view ribbon and I'm going to go to the resort, uh, the task usage view. All right. This looks very complicated. Let me simplify it for you. Each task that has a resource assigned like Tom and Jason, you'll be able to come in here, see information about that task, how much work has been is forecasted for that particular task, the duration of the task, start and finish dates. On the right hand side, we can see the planned work hours. All right. You can actually right click in here and show actual work as well. All right. So the work is also is all is the best guess that we have of that work that was done, whether it's forecasted hours, and when someone comes in and actually does the work, we'll mark that as actual work. So let's take this, make this really simple. I'm going to take a new task here, city planning. I'm going to assign a resource because I want to do this in here. I'm going to click on the assign resources. I'll assign Tom Henry. Okay. Boom. Straight away, we can see based on the start date, 321, the work forecasted, 321. If we hover over this date here. Uh, there we go, oh, March 20th, and then obviously this is the 21st. We can come in here and actually mark the real hours worked. And you could do this each week for your project, right? So you come in and here's your week blocks, Monday through Friday. You can change the calendars if you want people to work Saturdays. If they do work a Saturday, you can come and put that in. Let's take a look at that, All right? So this is really granular now. You might want it, you might not. So for Tom, you know, Monday, he said he only worked four hours. Then on, on Tuesday, he actually worked nine, a little bit of overtime there. On Wednesday, he worked eight hours. Thursday, eight hours. Friday, got tired and only worked four. So you can see how granular we can be with this, right? Let me show you that again. When we go to the following week, we can say eight 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 boom there we go so we're, that's how we can track actual work per period that is the most granular way to do that that's the way to get the most accuracy all right so if you can come zoom back out of here now back to the gantt chart view we're seeing some really granular data there about tom henry all right thanks very much for watching i hope you found this useful and check back to see my other video here on resource management and another one here on resource management also two videos that are very popular hope you like them this is a different take on that thanks for watching